Hello everyone, my name is Sarah and I am the Editor-in-Chief of Novasia. Today I am joined with some wonderful guests who will be talking about art in South Korea. Um, if you guys want to take it away, introduce yourselves if you don't mind. Sure, I'll be start here. Oh sure. Hi, I'm Marissa. You can call me Mercy. And I'm an artist, singer-songwriter from Singapore, and I'm also currently a master's student in Iwa Moons University. All right, I'm Leslie. I was previously an editor with Novasia, and I am I consider myself just an art groupie, and so I'm happy to talk to these women today. Hello, everyone. My name is Diana. I'm a designer, and I have just graduated for, from the program of um, studies of art in Songyeong Wan University. And I'm the host of this small R Talk podcast. I'm very happy to be between our groupies too today. <laughs> Great. And you just came out with a new podcast episode today, right? Yes, that's right. Okay, right. I have uploaded a new episode of the Alexander Calder exhibition this morning. Yes. Ooh. Okay. That's really exciting. You'll so I'll we'll listen later. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I listened to a few of them and I was like, dang, it helps me like, understand how much art there really is in Korea. Um, yeah, and I wanted to ask you guys um, kind of about art in Korea. It seems like it's increased recently or like at least interest in art has increased recently. Is that a correct assumption? Yeah. It, it is. It is a correct assumption. I mm -hmm. think um, if we trace back in time, um, the art hub, I think, has been displaced from Hong Kong to um, Seoul right mm -hmm. now. All eyes are on Seoul in this moment. Then the art market has been increasingly developing and we are seeing big movements also um, in the gallery scene, especially with major galleries that are going to be installing in the in the city. Mm -hmm. And well, next year, the freeze um, art fair is also the most expected art event probably in the last years here in Seoul. It's called the freeze? Yes, the, oh, the freeze the art fair, yes. Oh. So it, this is going to um, be like a very important landmark mm -hmm. that also is the evidence of the um, growth of the art scene in the region, yes. Okay. Do you, do you have any thoughts on maybe why Korea is booming more with interest in art and why museums are opening up more? There are so many reasons. Um, Mercy also may agree with me, but I think these times have changed everything. Um, for people who are, you know, like producing art, selling art. So mm -hmm. I think the first factor is these times. The pandemic has definitely pushed um, the boundaries of what is possible, of what needs to be possible in terms of producing in this context mm -hmm. and I think there are other factors that are contributing. Of course, Hallyu, as known as the Korean wave, mm -hmm. um, is a phenomenon, cultural phenomenon that has been expanding since the 2000s. And well, like I think mostly the creative Korean product is well spread all over the world with, you know, especially the series, the music, mm -hmm. And we can see also um, K-pop artists promoting art, going to art galleries. And the third um, and most interesting factor, maybe people don't know about this, but is taxation. So um, in in Korea, like uh, our works are, are under fifty thousand um, dollars. Don't get well. They're that not like taxed. Me, okay. <laughs> Yes, oh. but this attracts, of course, oh. uh, this young generation, young and wealthy generation, right? And to be and to purchase and begin a collection, mm -hmm. considering these uh, particular benefits um, of taxation. Wow! So there's lots of things happening in the Korean art world, and you're right. Korea does do things very, very quickly. So, mercy, like. Um, what do you think about like the current trends in the Korean art world? Are there any ones that you are like interested in? Are there any unique ones? And things that Diana has spoken about, digitalization, yeah. like metaverse. Because our world has been so globalized, right, through internet. And much more so during the pandemic times, like we feel really isolated. So everybody wants like a way to connect to people. And that's the only way we can do it through digitalization, through online interactions and like NFTs and so much hype about like thinking about what does it mean to have a space 
you know, now is no longer just a white cube. Now it's no longer about the institutions that the government like create exhibitions. It's all about like private spaces and it's about private spaces online and offline. Mm-hmm. You know, so like mm-hmm. even even like going to certain exhibitions I went to, they're like looking into VR. You know VR experiences. Mm. Even though Especially I felt really online. giddy, <laughs> I tried it and felt really oh, like I can't do this. But just think about like how far internet has developed, like for just a few years. I think imagine like just twenty years down the road, like next time our next generation will be like, VR is just like handphones to them. Imagine a time like that, mm. and artworks are to be bought like digital, like when fashion is digitized nowadays. You know we have people selling digital clothes. Really? Yeah. And people pay money to wow. like just edit their photos so that it's like eco friendly. It like it goes well. It bodes well with the agenda of our generation. So, like yeah. they're thinking about how much waste do you make, you know, just by mm. using all these artworks. Like, so it's like fast fashion, but without. Perhaps there are consequences digitally, but not the same consequences. Like yeah. it helps. Oh. So people yeah. actually like the idea, mm. even though maybe right now it's not like the best result mm. yet. But it's quite popular, and a lot of like people are talking about it on mm-hmm. YouTube. Like if you just search digital clothes, like it's one of the key things. Oh, I have to search. <laughs> oh, that's really interesting. Yeah. And I do enjoy like um, all the different ideas that that they have all around the world. Like even insti- art institutions are pushed to think out of the box because they're trying to attract people, right? Mm-hmm. They are trying it. Like it's really hard for people to come into their doors, so they have to do think about think out of the box. Mm. And technology is a great way for them to do that, but I also like think about like um, dealing with like isolation, mm. like the opposing isolation. I think that's one of the big things as well. Wow! Yeah, that's really interesting with the digital clothing. That also brings me. That reminds me of the metaverse, and that's also kind of intertwined with the art world in some ways. Um, the only thing I really know for certain, though, is. I went to this exhibition at the beginning of the year called Co- In Coex, and it was about graffiti. Oh, what was it called? Urban Break. Um, and they had some version of it on the metaverse. And I thought that was really interesting because I've never done anything like that. But have you re- like seen other things like that? How the metaverse is kind of, I don't know. Ca- yeah, there are art, with art. Art, art museums online. Like you can walk through. Like yeah. I went to the Busan Museum of Art. And then they they just let you experience the whole museum just by sitting down, like in your comfortable like wow. chair. Wow! Do you also have an avatar when you do it? Like you're, you can like, see your hands. Playing. Yeah, so oh. you choose to go wherever, um, and then like you know, it, I remember the last room that I managed to make it to was like Yu Huan's artwork. But the funny thing is, I saw the digital version, and then I went to see the real version. And there is a disparity, you know, mm. but it's an interesting like thing to to experience because when I'm there, I'm not allowed to touch the thing, I'm not allowed to go too close. But in the VR world, I can go directly through it, you know. Mm. So that's another experience we can we can experience the artworks in different ways. So mm. I think that's quite interesting too. Do you have to go to like the? Do you have to go in person to do the VR, or can you do it also from online? I think right now it's an exhibition exclusively oh, to okay. the space, but I think they're thinking about like opening up like a lot of the like Busan Biennale, 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 Busan Biennale. Yeah, they they already introduced because at that time nobody could get out of the house. Mm-hmm. There was a yeah. very really high level in Korea, so how are they gonna? Uh, bring the artworks to people, and they had like all these um, online exhibitions, and it was be- it became a norm for all these like act- art activities. Mm-hmm. If you didn't have an online presence, then you're not doing something. There's something like missing from the whole package. Mm-hmm. Like there's always a way to engage people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and yeah, even if if you're unable to get there, I think you you still be able to get a feel of the space. Uh, mm-hmm. Even not being there physically. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I could tell. Like from an outsider point of view, during COVID, looking at the digital changes and the ways that people that I mean, I'm a very much Instagram girl, but the ways <laughs> the different pages were uh, promoting things online, like events online, or just how to get involved. Um, I think Korea is really well suited to that. They're mm-hmm. they're very digitally minded, at least in Seoul for sure. Um, very digitally minded, and they love video games, so it's kind of like a marriage of them. Oh. 
Um, speaking of uh, how like things maybe changed during COVID, um, I wanted to ask, how do you guys think maybe galleries adapted to the COVID situation besides just doing online things? Was there anything else that kind of happened or changed? Mm, well, specifically in the in the in the gallery context, well, as Mercy said, like they're integrating this new reality technologies like um, artificial intelligence, these type of things that enhance, enhance in a different way the experience of the visitor. But the gallery itself, I think, has moved towards two things. They offer now what they call the um, viewing rooms. Um, major galleries, if they have events and they offer these uh, experiences for um, the people who are abroad or or the local people who um, there is this limited capacity of, for visiting these spaces. So um, okay. the viewing rooms are one of the biggest changes that I've seen. And the other one, as I have just mentioned, of course, the NFT um, way of um, uh, also um, commercializing our works has has had been uh, also one of the big changes in the gallery context. The museum one is, I think, uh, yeah, a bit different in that sense. Okay, so we were talking about um, how things might have changed during COVID. What about after, well, I mean, we're not quite over the hump, but after COVID, um, like how has art transformed or maybe new things, old things, like what's happened? I don't know. I can speak personally for okay. myself. Yeah, as an artist, you know, I came to Korea with, you know, the hopes of doing a lot of interactions with their different artists and musicians here. Because prior to the coronavirus uh, pandemic, like I, I managed to just have a lot of really strange encounters with people just on the street or just in galleries or just in art fairs. Koreans are generally really open to collaborating and just meeting up and talking and I really enjoyed that vibrant scene, the mm -hmm. art scene that they have. And I think somehow like the fear of going out, just that simple fear of uh, putting myself out, like suddenly came into my my like art process. And that isolation is a really big keyword, I think. And um, I think mentally, you know, it's easy to uh, think like as a foreigner in Korea, it's easy to think of ourselves as aliens, like they call us aliens, right? And I think a lot of foreigner friends that I, I have around me, you know, they, they struggle with that transition of finding a place here. Mm -hmm. I think more so in the post-pandemic times, if you came to Korea um, after the pandemic, you can feel that, that push, like that, um, the resistance um, to be part of the society or the community. And I definitely felt that because... Um, I was here one month before uh, the pandemic really hit Korea and I saw that stark difference and I was really like shocked at how how much like I couldn't do as an artist. Yeah, so like prior to the pandemic, I was going to a lot of exhibitions and we had conferences. We even like our professors would um, plan like meetings with artists mm -hmm. and they'll give us like a walkthrough through the, the you know the exhibition. It was a really enriching time. And then right after that, like everything's on the screen. Mm -hmm. So, and and I also had to do more like theory, theory classes, art theory and art history. And actually, it really got me to think really much deeper about what is art to me. Because mm -hmm. in the past, maybe art is just a technical thing. It's just a skill uh, to express something, maybe to express my feeling. But then when it comes to in the context of post-pandemic times, I got like really personal. It got really personal to me because all I could do was sit on my bed and paint. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the only space I had was my bed, my room. And you know how one rooms are in Korea. Uh, you, yeah. I'm sure we all felt that <laughs> isolation. I'm still feeling it. Yeah, you still feel it. You still feel it. Yeah. yeah. So imagine like being unable to go to the studio, like mm -hmm. just the school studio, so near to me, but I, they were they didn't it's allow so us to go. Wow. Yeah. So. I was like, I started to see things really differently just around me. Like my objects become really intimate with me. Mm. And then, you know, I, I accumulated a lot of mess, right? Because, you know, you just don't leave the house. Nobody's coming to your house. You don't want to clean your house. And the mess becomes like a landscape. And I got really close to um, thinking about my mental state. Mm. And so 
I think post pandemic, it may be a bad thing. I don't know, like people might think, oh, you're more ten tend to be depressed depressed or you're really upset about certain things. But I think it's an internal struggle like like throughout my life. But it's just magnified it and it like made me face face it straight straight up, you know. There was mm-hmm. no more distractions like going out or being busy. Like we are just left with ourselves. Mm-hmm. And that's where we really I mean as an artist I, I start to rethink what am I why am I doing art? Like what am I trying to express? Like um, what is my identity? There's so many like deeper topics that came up from just mm-hmm. dr- drawing on my bed <laughs> and making music in my room. Like all these things be- like became a real a much like deeper thing, you know, held a deeper meaning to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so I it affected your artwork as yeah, well. I think mm-hmm. I think in a way, uh, because knowing that everybody else is going through the same thing mm-hmm. right now, I think there is a bonus to express myself more authentically. Because in the past you might think, oh I'm just alone. Everybody's like behind the screens, Instagram glam, like everybody's like happy and I'm the only one unhappy or I'm the only one struggling but now it's not true everybody's can't deny that our lives are changed and we are struggling and we have trauma and I think it's it's the right time to talk about such things because people are open to talking about it maybe if the, this whole pandemic thing like 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 goes over maybe we'll go back to our lives again trying to pretend everything is right you know mm-hmm. so now is a really good time to talk about mm-hmm. such topics and the, the art that you or other artists create because of how the the pandemic has influenced you. Oh, I almost said how the influence has been you. <laughs> um, because of how it's influenced everyone, and that art, for a lot of it, will remain. And like the feeling that that artwork gave to the viewers as well, I think that will remain. And so, I mean, I hope so. I hope so, I hope too. So. <laughs> and your feelings will remain, of course. Yeah. And so that'll definitely affect, um, yeah, how we go about art or our lives afterwards, I think. Right. Yeah, art's really important in that realm. Mm. Oh. Do you think there's something you guys are going to miss in terms mm-hmm. of like you're talking about coming out of post pandemic? I know like from my experience with it, I'm not an artist, but I got to view a lot more art because of these digital mm-hmm. platforms. And one of the things I really loved, which had existed before the pandemic began, but I was unaware of, um, was the filming of ballets and operas mm-hmm. um, and putting them in movie theaters. But obviously you couldn't go to movie theaters, so they became accessible for like live streaming. So you could watch something in another country, like a live performance of a ballet or an opera or a delayed performance because of the time difference. Um, And so like stuff like that, I'm like, will it continue or Mm -hmm. will it now disappear now that we might be able to travel again if you have the passport? Um, Or will it be in theaters again? It was cheaper when it was like a home viewing versus going to the movie theater. Are there stuff like that that you as an artist or um, who studies art will is going to miss or like having access to these institutions that we wouldn't normally get to like being able to do a digital walkthrough of Uh a museum or an art gallery in Italy when I'm over here in Korea do you think you'll miss some of that or do you think you're kind of ready to go in person and see those types of things from my personal point of view that that's not gonna disappear I think we're not going to miss this stuff because this uh, pandemic has changed the order or let's say the way in we consume art, we experience art, we create art. And I think we are entering into, let's say, a a hybrid um, realm of experience in which not only the physical matters, but the virtual becomes much more aware and we have to say it, there has been a lot of resistance from the art world to adopt oh. certain um, technologies. Mm. And well, in this context, is no no exception mm. uh, either. I think I, 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 we can see this progression from the creator point of view, like the adoption of these technologies. But as we know, like the the engagement um, and the, the the relationship the the institutions, mm-hmm. the cultural and artistic institution create with the, with the audiences, I think the, there has been this resistance of adopt fully certain type of technologies and you know ways of you know uh, new ways of consuming art. As you say, like you can watch a concert. 
three hours after if you and you you can experience um these in different manners but i think uh many ways came to to stay as streaming services as mm -hmm. um the way in which even audience is um analyzed during the visit mm -hmm. Mm, among others, <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, for one, I'm glad that things are, the like, digital realm of art is probably here to stay for a little bit, more for the long term. I'm, I'm happy so that I can experience more and not have to go out for everything. Um, if I could like change the, uh, ask a different question in a different realm for a moment. So with Korean art, like so you both were students of art in Korea or you still are students of art. What brought you, since neither of you are from Korea, to Korea to study art um, or just to commune with art in Korea? You know, one of you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yes. You need the eyebrows. <laughs> the eyebrows. <laughs> well, um, I don't know. At the, since I, I was really young, I've always been really interested in Korean culture in general. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we started off with like Hallyu, right? Uh, and then I was interested in the language. And if you learn the language, you definitely learn about the history. And then you learn about the history, you learn about the art. It's like a rabbit hole. Yeah, it's just never ending. Mm -hmm. And it's just natural because I I do art uh, uh, since I was really young. I was interested in art at a really young age. So it just naturally brought me here because I want to know what is so interesting about what is the, like the, how do I say, what is the... <laughs> yeah. What is the, the specialty, the specialty like of Korea? I want to know. Mm -hmm. Like, so every time I come here on a holiday, I'll always mm -hmm. go to the museums. Mm -hmm. wow. And on Sundays, you know how vibrant on Sundays, like on the street of Samcheongdong, they will have like independent artists selling their artworks, handicrafts. Then you go through the galleries. And then you have coffee. Like the whole experience is really mm -hmm. like a dream to me. So for someone who loves like creative things. Mm. And, you know, compared to Singapore at that time, it wasn't as established as now. Like, Korea was like, wow, like a haven for art, for artists or people who like art, right? You agree. So, mm. naturally, I, I thought this, this would be a really good environment for me to grow as an artist. And this is prior to, <laughs> to the pandemic, but yeah, it's it. Like, even music, um, you know, busking, it's yeah. a really common thing in Korea, right? Yeah. Or like selling your art in shops like mm -hmm. illustrators or painters who do merchandising mm -hmm. it's just so common thing it's like a, a common thing that everybody do does and mm -hmm. people actually buy them you know they support you so like i thought this would be a really good place to make my art known mm -hmm. and to interact with more people and and it's a it's really interesting for me as someone who doesn't really like to box myself like i'm only going to do art i'm only going to do music you know, sometimes we tend to have to, people say, which one are you going to do? Choose one, you know? Mm -hmm. But in Korea, a lot of people embrace all, all disciplines, you know? Like I know a lot of musicians who are um, selling books, they write, you know, they do photography. Yeah. Or they are like, well, I'm thinking think of like Mino from Winter. He yeah, does he art does and paint, the G-Dragon does too. art. So. Yeah, he does yeah. fashion. There is no fashion, limits yeah. to what art is. I feel like mm. you can see it as a bad thing. Some people like see you're not, you're not, you're not professional enough. But I feel like that's the way like artists are going towards. There, there is no medium, you know. We are post medium now, so everything should be like, like even on a digital platform. If you wanna make your your art be known, even if it's just a painter, you have to learn how to do video, like show how you do the progress, you have to edit things, mm -hmm. you have to write to people, you know, market yourself. I think in the throughout the whole creative pipeline, like just one artist actually can do everything. And that that makes them really powerful like uh, as a creator. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think that's the direction that a lot of people are taking in Korea. Are you taking that direction as well? Uh, uh, I hope so. <laughs> a lot of work, but I'm practicing. I'm practicing you're, still. You're right, though. Like when it communing with art, you see that people have to kind of they take on this digital know how as well, mm -hmm. and they take on this over here. So like all these skills that you have to know um, in order to promote your art or just to commune with others' art as well. So that's really interesting. Uh, what about you, Diana? Why why are you where Why did you come to Korea for? That's a very good question. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I like food. <laughs> I have a very different type of, of journey. I started like 
interested in Korean food and like the Korean astronomy. And then I decided like it would be so interesting to learn more. And I started studying the language back in my country. Mm -hmm. And then I came to know about the Korean educational system, its standards. Mm -hmm. And I say, wow, it's fantastic. And as a designer, of course, um, I agree with Koreans that they have this natural attraction to beauty. (laughs) Well, I was attracted since a very young age to Asian aesthetics, mm-hmm. I, th- I think. So I uh, so was like Mercy progressively studying more and more. There, I think the reasons they revealed themselves. And then in my, during my undergraduate, I, um, I, my, my thesis was about cultural policy. And then while I was finishing my undergraduate start studies, um, I came to know that the cultural um, policy here, systems here in Korea are also so well designed. I wanted to learn more about that. And there was this opportunity through the JKS program to mm-hmm. um, for, for the Korean um, scholarship, mm-hmm. the Korean government scholarship. So I apply and yes, three years ago, I can't. You're like, aha, yeah, she is worthy. (laughs) (laughs) I know you. What? What? Oh, you. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, so I think it it was very interesting in that sense. But when you come here, you are open to this very uh, wide range of possibilities within the artwork. the cultural marketing, the um, the cultural management, it, it's so strong. And in terms of the art business itself, I think there will be much more to learn in this arena um, in the future. It's It almost seems like extraneous, but the, like it's already happened, but Korea, I've heard, can be come maybe in the future like this cultural hub and it seems like it's already that way but mm-hmm. like this is where people go like people in the United States where I'm from mm-hmm. would go to Hollywood mm-hmm. um, or they would go to New York in order to pursue artistic activities whether it be visual art or um, performance um, so can you see Seoul is, is it on the way to becoming even stronger in that direction like oh I really want to do something artsy and so I want to go to Seoul in order to pursue that yes what do you guys think? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. It's it's happening and they have a very, um, in, the, the level of infrastructure they have in these um, cities, very important. That along with the, the mix with technology, I think, sets up this um, environment for growth. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'm excited to be here during that kind of time. Yes. What do you think? Um, uh, in general, mm-hmm. I just have a sense that Koreans, they, they admire artists, they admire musicians, they admire creatives, and mm-hmm. people actually do support them. So it's, just, it's a really good place to be, I think, you know, right now. And um, I don't know, because I'm just comparing my, my feeling from being on an island like Singapore, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's really small, and just the vastness of the, the, the interconnected like relationships that everybody has with each other. And also, I do think that the government do support a lot, like give grants mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. yeah, and a lot of, there are a lot of galleries. Like if you walk anywhere, you are bound to see a gallery. <laughs> like even little nooks and crannies of a, mm-hmm. a random alley, there is a gallery there. I mm-hmm. have one Korean friend who told me the same about museums. In mm-hmm. Korea, there are so many museums that <laughs> there is a museum about museum. <laughs> oh, probably there? is there. Is it, I uh, think it was joke? just oh, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna go. But but it might be don't yeah. don't be surprised. Be, yeah, yeah. Yes. That'd be super meta. I would uh, yeah, <laughs> museum of museum. Yes. 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 Amazing. Yeah. Well it's always great to see city or places that have such diversity and are welcoming of art mm-hmm. um, and want to have an art scene because there's some places where it might not be encouraged as much or the art scene might not be as vibrant as mm-hmm. much so I think we're all very fortunate to be here and get to partake in some of the art that surrounds us quite literally surrounds us with all the galleries and all the museums or I might just put in street art as well yes street street art. Art. <laughs> the tunnel that's near Yonsei University oh, yeah. Tokyo <laughs> yes go go to the yeah, and at, in every cafe they have mm-hmm. exhibitions Mm, yeah, and they have performances. They always have open mics. It's like, yeah, so open and vibrant. Yeah. Well, hopefully, when borders are more open and travel hopefully becomes a bit easier, people will be able to come to Korea and see some of the <laughs> vibrant art that we've talked about here today. Um, it's been amazing that you guys took time out of your days today oh, yeah. to come and talk with us. Thank you so much for appearing on the podcast. 
Um, if there's anything you'd like to say before we wrap this up, maybe give a shout out to your art. Where can we find it? Or you have any social medias that we can follow you on? Or if there's a podcast you want to make sure everyone's aware of, please shout it out. Of course, this is like an invitation for everyone to listen to the Small Art Talk podcast. It's like a podcast about very brief reviews on the latest exhibitions you can find here in the city. So you can listen in Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, and through the website, smallarttalk.com. Uh, <laughs> there will be a link in the description below. Mm. Promise. Great, great. And you can find my music and art on all social media platforms, I guess. Yeah. And if you want to listen more to uh, to my original music, you can find me on um, major music platforms. And also uh, hit me up if you want to ask me anything. <laughs> we will have, again, the contact information down in the description below. Um. I guess that's right. it. Thank you so much again Thank you. for Thank you attending very much. today. Yeah, yeah, really. Really well. Thank you. Uh, this has been the Novasia podcast. Uh, don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Bye.